let's see about varicose carcinoma so varicose carcinoma it is a variant of squamous cell carcinoma so variant of squamous cell carcinoma is varicose carcinoma it is characterized by a predominantly exophytic overgrowth of well differentiated keratinizing epithelium having minimal atp and with locally destructive pushing margins at its interface with underlying connective tissue so there is a exophytic overgrowth of well differentiated keratinizing epithelium having minimal atp with locally destructive pushing margins at its interface with underlying connective tissue so it is a well differentiated hyperplastic stratified squamous epithelium it is organized into bulbous reti ridges that exhibit little or no cytological atp or mitotic activity so there may be a significant endophytic component and the invading margin is usually below the level of the surrounding margin so the deep surface invaginations are filled with keratin the advancing epithelial border is broad and the basement membrane is generally intact and there is a heavy inflammatory cell reaction in the adjacent connective tissue local destruction of connective tissue occurs in advance of the deep epithelial border growth is generally slow and metastatic spread spread occurs later so the there is a view that varicose carcinoma may become more aggressive if irradiated so here the important point is if we give irradiation radiation to varicose carcinoma it will be it will become more aggressive and the most varicose carcinoma can be distinguished from squamous cell carcinoma on the basis of their mode of growth and infrequent dysplasia and absence of metastasis so how will you differentiate varicose carcinoma from squamous uh, car squamous cell carcinoma the mode of growth and infrequent dysplasia and absence of metastasis so such lesion should be classified and treated as squamous cell carcinoma when they have occasionally foci of conventional squamous cell carcinoma within the varicose carcinoma these lesions should should be classified and treated as squamous cell carcinoma and next moving on to varicose hyperplasia so it is also a exophytic overgrowth of the well differentiated keratinizing epithelium that is similar to varicose carcinoma but without the destructive pushing border at its interface with the underlying connective tissue so the areas of varicose hyperplasia may be encountered in association with the varicose carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma or proliferative varicose leukoplakia so these are the key points to we have to remember when we see a varicose carcinoma and what are the clinical features so it is most commonly occur in elderly patient around 60 to 70 years and uh, 75 percentage of the lesions developing in males and it is more commonly in the buccal mucosa gingiva or alveolar ridge and it is least common in palate and floor of the mouth so the neoplasm is chiefly exophytic and appears papillary in nature so here the important point is papillary in nature and with a pebbly surface which is sometimes covered by a white leukoplakic film so it is a exophytic appears papillary in nature and with a pebbly surface and it is sometimes covered with a white leukoplakic film so the lesions commonly have rugae like fold with deep cleft between them so lesions of the buccal mucosa may become quite extensive before the involvement of the deeper contiguous structure so the lesions of the mandible mandibular ridge or gingiva it will grow overlaying the soft tissue and rapidly become fixed to the periosteum and gradually invading the invading and destroying the mandible so the regional lymph nodes are often tender and enlarged so the in varicose carcinoma it is a exophytic papillary in nature and pebbly surface and with uh, covered by a white leukoplakic film and lesions commonly have rugae like fold with deep cleft between them and the if it affect the mandibular ridge or gingiva overlying the soft tissue mandibular ridge and gingiva it infect the or affect the overlying soft tissue and rapidly become fixed to the periosteum and involving mandible also so the 
regional lymph nodes are often tender and enlarged and stimulating metastatic tumor but this node involvement is usually inflammatory so pain and difficulty in mastication are common complaints and bleeding is rare complaint so definitely patient have complaint of pain and difficulty in mastication bleeding is a rare complaint and occurs mostly in the tobacco chewers and ill fitting dentures these are the clinical features of varicose carcinoma so patient may have pain and regional lymph nodes are tender and enlarged and patients complaints of pain and mastication so this picture showing the varicose carcinoma that affecting the tongue showing exophytic growth and the white leucoplakic membrane covering the lesion this mandibular alveolar ridge involving the or having the varicose carcinoma next moving on to histological features the histological features may be extremely deceptive in many cases have been diagnosed originally as simple papilloma or benign epithelial hyperplasia because of the orderly and harmless appearance of the specimen so there is generally marked epithelial proliferation with down growth of epithelium into the connective tissue but usually without a pattern of true invasion so definitely there is a marked epithelial proliferation with down growth of the epithelium into the connective tissue so the epithelium is well differentiated and shows little mitotic activity and pleomorphism or hyperchromatism may also seen and the cleft like spaces lined by thick layer of para keratin extend from the surface deeply into the lesion so the para keratin plugging also occurs extending into the epithelium so the para keratin lining the cleft within the with the para keratin plugging is the hallmark of varicose carcinoma is very very important so the para keratin lining the cleft with the para keratin plugging is the hallmark of the varicose carcinoma even though the lesion may be extensive the basement membrane will often appear intact so when the lesion become infected focal intraepithelial abscesses are seen if the lesion is infected there is presence of focal intraepithelial abscesses are seen significantly chronic inflammatory cell infiltration in the underlying connective tissue may or may not be present so important histological features are there is a epithelial proliferation and well differentiated and uh, a little mitotic activity pleomorphism or hyperchromatism present and the para keratin lining the cleft with the para keratin plugging it is a hallmark of varicose carcinoma if it is infected there is presence of intraepithelial abscesses so this uh, this picture showing varicose carcinoma histological picture so varicose car uh, configuration with the bro broad bulbous retipex with pushing margin in many areas along with features of mild dysplasia and few areas of para keratin plugging are seen so these are the retipex present in the varicose carcinoma and what are the treatment and prognosis of varicose carcinoma so varicose carcinoma has been treated in several ways in the past usually it is treated by surgery x-ray radiation or combination of the two now the some reports or says anaplastic transformation of lesions occurring in patients treated by ionizing radiation so while the radiation appears to be the triggering mechanism and other factors contributing or related to the transformation are unknown so even though such occurrence is uncommon many investigators believe the treatment should be entirely surgical so if we give ionizing radiation to treat the varicose carcinoma it it act as a triggering factor so the treatment should be entirely surgical so since the lesion is slow growing and late to metastasis many cases can be treated by relatively conservative ex excision without mutilating procedure so the prognosis is much better than the other oral ep epidermoid carcinoma